Okay, hello everybody. This is Stranger Gamer back with a bit of a confession because you may have noticed that instead of group E going up yesterday, group F went up instead. And that was because one of the matches in group E, the file got corrupted. Because you see, when I when I do these, I, I record each match separately in case, worst case scenario, one of them gets corrupted. And in this case, I'm bloody glad I did because if I didn't, I would have lost all of group D E's matches. Instead of just the one, and that one match being Primal Cartman against Team North America. And that match would usually be first, but given how... Well, I am going to put it first. <laughs> but it's kind of come after the other two matches, so we know, I know the results of the other two matches. I will not spoil them, so don't worry. And I won't talk about the table much until pr the Primal Cartman match has ended. So... Without further ado, we will start Group E Round 4 with Primal Cartman against Team North America. So enjoy. And then the other two matches will come after this. Alrighty then. Up first for Cartman in the red corner, we have a Spinosaurus. And before people ask, I'm not going to reveal who won the match last time in, in the corrupted video. Unless, unless the same person wins. Okay, this Spinosaurus, very much the attacking type here. But it will be at a type advantage against this Ineosaurus of T North Americans. But what I will say, this Ineosaurus only has one lightning move, so maybe the type advantage will matter, maybe it will not. We'll just have to see. Ooh, good start from the Eniosaurus there, and Anyanguera dive to boot. But, even with a type advantage, a decent amount of damage done, I'll say. Oh, that, my friends, is a tie. The Spinosaurus being tie type. At least I think this one is. Ooh, big water sword here from Cartman. Will it do that much damage? Uh, it does a decent amount. That's mainly because the Eniosaurus doesn't have as much health as the Spino. Oh, and a Futaba Cannon. Is this 1-0 the Primal Cartman? Indeed it is. A good start there, despite having the type disadvantage. Okay, as for Team North America's second dino, we have an Ankylosaurus. <laughs> I'll stop. Can Team North America pull this back? A defeat here will... Well, it will end their chances of qualifying. It's win or bust for Team North America. A win here for Cartman will strengthen their grip on the top four. For a defeat, and it'll all come down to the last day. Oh, we've seen this before. When you fail to take out the first dino, and the first dino gives your opponent a 2-0 lead. Is it going to happen again? That seems to be a theme in this tournament. Like, when you fail to defeat... To get hits off on the... F when you fail to get off hits on the first dinosaur. And then the first dinosaur gets, gets off a couple of hits. And then all of a sudden you find yourself 2 0 out. But that hasn't happened here. And Team North America have pulled it back. But Primal Cartman still has a decent lead. Okay, up next for Cartman we have an Eocarcaria. Again, more of the attacking type. Can Team North America pull this back, or will Cartman continue to extend her lead? Ooh, a hit from the Ankylosaurus and a critical one to boot, and look at all that damage! But the Eocarcaria finishing off Ankylosaurus and keeping Primal Cartman in the lead. 
Okay, as for Team North America's third and final dino, we have Brontekins. It has been quite a disappointment in this tournament. I was expecting a lot more from Brontekins, but never mind. Can Brontekins be key here for Team North America? Or can Primal Cartman hammer home? Um, I think Primal Cartman will be hammering home. Oop, is the tie recovery effect? It's another tie. Another tie recovery. Oh, another hit from Eokarkiria. And it's a blazing spin attack. But because it is at a tight disadvantage, it will not do that much damage to Brontekins. <laughs> Ooh, Brontekins getting a crit. And here comes the recovery. Primal Cartman, not in a big as lead as you, as you think. And well, that has killed the Eokarkiria. Team North America fighting back. Alrighty then, as for Primal's third dino, we have a Crowlophosaurus. Crowlophosaurus style. And well, not much to say here because it has all Blizzy secret moves. Like, show some originality. <laughs> I suppose that's why they're there. Oh, that's a tie. Ooh, here comes Ocean Panic. Panic time for Primal Cartman. Sploosh. And will it be bye bye boat to one of her moves? Indeed it will. And all of a sudden, Brontekins actually doing something. Okay, so Brontekins will be going rock, as will the, the Crowlophosaurus, and it's Spectral Armor time. Ugh, gotta get the bloody codes out. There we go, it's Jack Armor time. Will we see Spectral Destroyer, or can Primal Cartman protect herself? The Brontekins getting that crucial hit and giving Team North America their first win of the tournament. That is what Brontekins can do. And despite a valiant effort from Primal Carmen, there will be no losing bonus point. Ah. <laughs> Well, that's kind of that's kind of interesting because Team North America won the first, won the corrupted match, but they won it a lot more convincingly. So, but this match was definitely a better one. So, in a way, I'm kind of glad my file got corrupted, and it, it led to the same outcome anyway. So it didn't really matter, I suppose. But anyway, I'll update the table, and well, past me will be moving on to the next match, but future me will be moving on to updating the actual table, and ending the session. Okay, in this matchup, we see, we see. Oh, hang on, I forgot to put the random number generator. Hang on. There. Okay. Up, up first for Nano Hunter, we have a Simultaramus. And despite not having super moves, this guy's been pretty decent for Nano Hunter. But it's going to be tough because in the blue corner for Lanzu, we have a Lanzu Source, of course. The super impact is not to be underestimated, and it will pack a punch. The winner of this match, since they're both level on points with seven, the winner of this match will temporarily go top until the end of the next match. And also, should, Alad should Aladar lose in the next matchup, the winner of this match will also guarantee their place in the last 32. Okay, we start with a tie. That definitely suits Simo Tyrannus more because it is charge type. 
Ooh, but that will suit Lanzusaurus though, an opening crit. Taken away over half of Simultranus' HP already. Oh, that, my friends, is a tie. Ooh, the Simul Tyrannoso responding with a crit and a defense boost and a light recovery. Ooh, the Super Impact has been triggered and a Super Impact will insta-kill the Simul Tyrannus. Oh, that's a tie. But again, that will suit Simo Tyrannus down to the ground. Well, consecutive ties there, finishing off Lanzusaurus and giving Nano Hunter a 1-0 lead. Alrighty then, up next for Lanzu we have an Edmontosaurus. Not much to say about this guy here, but can it pick but can it finish off the Simo Tyrannus? Or will we see the same old pattern again? With the opposition's first dino keeps getting off hit and gives said opposition a 2-0 lead. The answer to that is the Edmontosaurus gets a crit. And it is lethal for Samo Tyrannus. Alrighty then, up next for Nano Hunter we have an Ulti Rhinus. Super Ulti Rhinus I should say. Could be a could be a problem here for Aladar to deal with, especially if he gets off an Awaken Mode hit. And Nano Hunter 3, Awaken Mode on 3. Whoa, hit coming from Edmontosaurus. Lots of damage dealt there. Ooh, but the Ulti Rhinus responds with a hit of his own. Not as much damage dealt, and the Emerald Garden has been triggered. Okay, off twice. And Emerald Garden be activated. Aladar coming back strong in... No, not Aladar. Lanzu coming back strong in this match. And turning the screw. But it is awakening time next round for Ulti Rhinus. So could that be what Nano Hunter needs? To wrestle back momentum in this match. Oh, he doesn't get the hit! Instead, the Edmontosaurus is gonna get off a metal wing. <clears throat> Although, a saving grace for Ulti Rhinus is that it didn't die, and there's still a chance for Emerald Garden. Ooh, an Emerald Garden! Nano Hunter biting back! Oh, that, that's, that's rubbish! Oop, what's this? Oh, it's Nature's Blessing. Okay, that'll definitely make up for it. Oh, okay, this Metal Wing will definitely take out... Uh, God, surely this will take out Ulti Rhinus and will give Lanzu a 2-1 lead. Yeah, that's curtains for Ulti Rhinus. Okay, as for Nano Hunter's last dino, we have a Sukumimus. Sukumimusta. Watch out for that Futaba cannon. Could, be, could do a serious amount of damage. Can Nano Hunter get back in this match and wrestle back the momentum? Well, he will with a start like that. A good hit there, but the Emerald Garden has been triggered once again. But this time, can Nano Hunter stop it from happening? Or will Lanzu get it off? The answer is, Lanzu will be getting it off again. I know, the Sukumimus losing all its health. Oh, what's this? Oh, it's got to be Nature's Blessing, isn't it? Wow, look at that. 
all of the damage the Sukumimus did last round has all been for nothing. Okay, this Futaba Cannon should do a lot of damage. It might even be lethal. Big hit, though, coming from Nano Hunter. Oh, oh, it almost killed it, but not quite. But this time, no Emerald Garden for Lanzu. Ooh, well, the critical block's going to do nothing because the Edmontosaurus is dead. Nano Hunter striking back. Okay, up third and final for, up for Lanzu, we have a Super Titanosaurus. This guy is definitely not one to be messed with. Packs a punch with that crit, but also beware of that Hydro Cutter. And I feel like the Awaker mode could be key for, for, for the winner of this match. Get it out eventually. Ooh, another Futaba Cannon though. And another Futaba Cannon deactivated. And the Raptor's coming in for Critical Block. Nano Hunter turning back the screw on Lanzu. Boosh, boosh, boosh. Okay, that's once. Okay, that's rock for Sukumimus. And also rock for Titanosaurus. Ooh. Is this lethal for Sukumimus? Oh, not lethal, but big damage done. And a bone and points guaranteed for both of our combatants. <laughs> oh, this is such a tight game. Oh, 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 never mind. Super minus one. <laughs> I thought it'd leave on a little bit of health, but an impressive comeback there from Nano Hunter to defeat Lanzu. But Lanzu will get a losing bonus point because Super Mimus' health was below half. That was a good match, wasn't it? Right, time to update the table and we'll move on to our last match of this video. Alrighty then, I've been talking about this matchup and here it is. In the red corner for Aladar, we have a DeSantra Rowers. A win here for Aladar will definitely boost their chances of finishing in the, in the top four. Defeat will leave it all on the last round. As for Dark Ash Star in the blue corner, we have an Alberta Ceratops, which will be at a tight disadvantage against that Decentraurus, which could be key. If Dark Ash Star wins this matchup, he will guarantee himself and Nano Hunter a place in the last 32. Just shows how significant this match is. Ooh, we start with a tie. Oh, that will suit the Desandrorus more, though. That will definitely suit Aladar, though. The first hit goes to Desandrorus, and because of that type advantage, more damage will be dealt. But the Alberta Ceratops does get a hit back. And because that's not a light... Is it a light? Yeah, it is. Thunder Driver, of course. Oh, the idiot is a Thunder Driver. Oh, 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 hang on, RNG's being slow. Ooh, uh, Aladabo on top early on. But the counter blitz has been triggered. That could be key here for Dark Ash Star. Oh, but it is a tight, what is it? It is Sand Trap. Oh, how big could that be? The Sand Trap stopping the counter blitz there. The worst case scenario for Dark Ash Star. But it's excellent for Aladardo as it will give them a 1-0 lead. And it stops them getting hit by counter blitz. Okay, as for Dark Ashtar's second dino, we have... A Super Paris. Awaken mode on 5. And unlike the Alberta Ceratops, this thing will have a type advantage over that Desantororus. So there's still no need to panic for, for Dark Ash Star. They can easily pull this back. Even if Desantororus keeps getting hits. As you saw in the match against Lanzu with Desantororus got about 10 hits. But Lanzusaurus got one hit and killed it. So no need to panic yet. 
and you will have the Awaken mode to save you if you need it. Because, yeah, look at the damage there. Very insignificant damage. They even keep doing this. All Paris needs is one hit. Oop, there's a tie. Ooh, here comes the hit from Paris. And yep, yeah, look at the difference. But Crystal Crusher has been triggered. Okay, that's three times. Two more for the Awaken mode. And here comes Crystal Crusher. Which will help Aladar here because it will lower Paris' defense. Which means she will take more damage. Does four times. Ooh, big Crypto from Paris. Taking out the Decentralis. And bring it in Aladar's second Dino. That Dino being the Super Epista Sila Claudia. Okay, Awaken Mode on. It was Aladar, Aladar, Aladar. Three. So next time, it'll be Awakening Mode for Paris. And then we got three for Epista Sila Claudia. You got to do it, yeah. I, I don't know what that was. Ooh, a big crit from Paris. And it's awakening time. Could this be what Dark Ashtar needs? Oh, come on, RNG. Don't do this. Now, pause. Come on, RNG. Things are getting interesting. Why you do this? Okay, give it a sec. It'll come back on now. Okay, that's a five. Ooh, a big hit from Paris. I think that's a piss to see La Claudia dead and buried. And all of a sudden, well, I wouldn't say all of a sudden, but all of a sudden, Dark Ashtar has the lead as Aladar's third dino, the Omega Eocarcaria, comes in. And with the Goma moveset, you can't really go wrong. Ooh, big turn. Could that be a big turning point in the match? As Dark Ashtar holds a narrow lead. Oh, what's this? Oh, it's Green Impulse! Chipping away at that Eocarcaria. Another Green Impulse. Ooh, Ashtar needed to be Heat Eruption. But instead... Oh, that's interesting. Bit of health regained there. Oh, what will it be this time? Oh my god, another green impulse! <laughs> but the hell, Paris, what are you playing at? Another green impulse from Dark Ashtar. Chipping away at that Eocarcaria's HP. So from two green impulses, look how much HP Eocarcaria has now. Oh, um, I think the Okakiri is dead. Oh, not yet, but Dark Ashtar has guaranteed themselves points regardless of the result. Ooh, it won't be a bonus point win though, a chance missed for Dark Ashtar there. But they are still in good position to win. Okay, as for Dark Ashtar's last dino, we have a Black T-Rex. And again, um... With a Poultry 200 technique, I'm not sure what Heat Eruption will do. Wow, look how much bigger Black T-Rex is compared to the Eel Carcaria. Massive! Ooh, a crit from the Eel Carcaria! Aladar making things a bit interesting, but no Flare Sword. Okay, well, despite a little bit of a fight back there from Eocarcaria, Dark Ashtar closes out the win. And puts his... Oh my god, that was a pathetic amount of health. Anyway, Dark Ashtar defeats Aladar and books their place in the last 32 along with Nano Hunter. Right, we'll update the table and we'll end the session. Alright, here's how Group E actually looks. We have... We have Dark Ashtar and Nano Hunter up top. 
with 10 points apiece and pretty much guaranteeing their places in the last 32. Then we have Lanzu in third on 8 points, Primal Cartman on 7 points, Aladar on 5, and then Team North America bringing up the rear on 3. There is still a glimmer of hope for Team North America though, as long as Aladar and Cartman suffer defeat. Oh, actually, hang on a minute. Actually, no, there is no hope for Team North America, because these two got to play each other. So if if Team North okay if Team North America wins their match three 0 then there is a chance because they'll go up to eight. And then Aladar, I think, beat Team North America, and as did well Primal Cartman didn't. Okay, there is still a very slim chance for Team North America to get through, but it does look very unlikely because. It looks like that even if they get three points, they'll go to six. Actually, yeah, they get three points, they go to six. But still not enough to overtake Cartman, who's who's on seven. If they get to seven, they'll be above Cartman. But then, if Aladar beat, but then they'd have to rely on Aladar to beat Cartman, and then Aladar will go above T North America, and then Aladar and, and then T North America and Cartman will be eliminated. Oof, it's quite it's it's tough to wrap your head around, isn't it? And actually, by that logic, Lanzu is guaranteed his place in the last 32. Because he can't be below both of these two guys. Actually, no, Cartman defeat... Wow, <laughs> wrap your head around this, people. If Primal Cartman loses and gets a losing bonus point, they will go above Lanzu on the matchup, because I think Primal Cartman beat Lanzu. However, I think Lanzu, Lanzu defeated Aladar, so then... Lanzu would be above Aladar. So yeah, Lanzu is guaranteed to go through. And fourth place is between Primal Cartman and Aladar. What a big game that could be. I mean, realistically, between these two. And, funny enough, they play each other. Uh, other matches, Team North America taking on Nano Hunter. And Lanzu going up against Dark Ash Star. So these three will be fighting to decide who wins the group. And these three will be fighting for fourth. So, I hope you enjoyed that. Stay tuned for next time. Well, well, we've already done round four for group F, so we'll do round four for group G. Well, I've already done it, but it'll be posted up after this video. So, stay tuned to then. And until then, it's a Stranger Gamer signing out.